All right, our next video here in 5.1, we're going to look at building polynomial graphs. Again, these are just going to be rough sketches. They're, they do not have to be exact. Just give a picture of what it looks like. So we're going to use our leading coefficient test, turning points, y-intercepts, zeros, and multiplicity of zeros. And we're going to find where the intervals are increasing and decreasing. No, we're not. We've already done that in the previous chapter. I'm not going to do that now, but you might see this in the homework. We already know how to do that, so I'm going to save ourselves a little time here. So my first polynomial function, well, it's really what we call a factored polynomial. It's kind of hard to figure out what my leading term is, so what I would do is some people like to multiply this all out to turn it into a polynomial function. This would be a waste of time. Don't foil. Don't foil. Don't combine like terms. Here is a shortcut to get to this polynomial function. Number one, take the leading terms in each binomial, including the powers. x times x squared, x cubed. There's your leading term. Minus 2 or negative 2 times positive 1 squared. That's 1 times negative 2, negative 2. We don't need the middle terms. So based on that information to find the first term and the y-intercept, we know that the leading, the graph will have the n behaviors for left and right as x cubed, and it has a y-intercept of 0, comma, negative 2. So plot the y-intercept. Left side goes down, right side goes up. This is what my graph has to look like, something like this. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this function that's in factored form. And I'm going to solve this. All right. Now, we're going to solve these for x to find my x-intercepts. So we know that the graph is probably going to come up, cross an x-axis, come back down to this y-intercept, and go back up. So my turning points, how do I know what's happening there, is remember our turning points, if it's x cubed, you have either 2 or 0. And the only way you can have 0 is that you had to have a multiplicity of 3 or more for one x-intercept. So if you take these binomials and you solve them, x will equal 2, x will equal negative 1, but the negative 1 occurs twice. So this is a multiplicity of 2 on the negative 1 because of the power of 2. You don't have a multiplicity of 3 or better, so we'll just plot our points. There's negative 1, 0, that's an x-intercept. There's my 2, 0. But what it's good to do is to put these little subscripts by your points. Now if you want to change this and just put a negative 2 here, a negative 1, subscript 2, a 2, subscript 1, that's fine. So what's happening here is my graph does not have a multiplicity of 3 or higher, so I now know I have two turning points. And so now my graph comes from the bottom, it comes up and it hits this x-intercept with a multiplicity of 2, so that's a touch and go, it comes back down to this y-intercept, and at some point in time, it has to turn and go back up. And since that has a multiplicity of 1, that's a go-through. Now, on the homework, as I mentioned, I'm not going to do increasing and decreasing. So once you have this rough picture drawn, you can go to your calculator, plug this in, and find your relative max and mins and then find your increasing and decreasing. Well, first of all, because this is a turning point, that's a relative max. So you already have one of them. You just have to find the relative min between 0 and 2. It will be down here somewhere. So that's your increasing and your other increasing interval. And then from negative 1 to this value will be your other decreasing interval. But again, we've already talked about that. I'm not going to waste time in the videos for it. Next question, again, factored form again. So again, I'm going to not foil this out. 
I'm going to use that trick to find the first term and the last term. However, in this case, you have a GCF factor. It's not a binomial. So this negative 0.2x squared has to be multiplied to the x and to this x to give me negative 0.2x to the fourth. For my constant, the negative 4 and the 2 being multiplied together also has to be multiplied to that GCF and therefore it gives me 1.6x squared. So my leading term has a 4 for a power, a negative leading coefficient, so even power, negative a value, both left and right hand behavior go down. Y intercept, well I really don't have a constant here unless you want to consider putting a zero out there and that's where my Y intercept will be. That's also going to be an X intercept which is generated from that GCF factor right there. But having a power of four means my turning points will be three or one and find your X intercepts the point, their negative 0.2x squared, that's going to give you a 0, which again occurs twice. The x minus 4, we set that equal to 0, gives you 4. The x plus 2 set equal to 0 gives you negative 2. Well, since those binomials are to a power of 1, they occurred once. x raised to the power of 2, that 0 occurs twice. There's no multiplicity of 3 or higher, so now you know you're going to have 3 turning points. So we can plot these points and understand my curve is going to come up, cross this x-intercept, it's a go-through, it's got to turn back down, hit this zero, but because it occurs twice, that's going to be a turning point. That's a touch and go. So one turning point, two turning points, we'll come back up and back down. There's your third turning point. Again, if you for the increasing and decreasing, go to your calculator, find that relative max, that's already one of our relative mins, find this point for your relative max, and now you can do your increasing and decreasing intervals. Now we have a polynomial function that is truly a polynomial function, it's all multiplied out. So we know the first term, we know the last term, we have x to the third, we know we're going to have two or zero turning points. We know that it's a power of three, so left side goes down, right side goes up because it's a positive x cubed. And we have a y-intercept at zero, negative 12. So first term, that gives me my left and right hand behavior. Constant gives me the y-intercept. So to determine how many turning points, we're definitely going to have to find out our x-intercepts to see if we have a multiplicity here. So we'll take this, set it equal to 0, and we're going to factor this. Well, here you've got to factor by grouping. So you kind of group the two terms, the first two and the last two. So I like this to draw a line through this just to see that I'm separating the two. So we're going to factor out a GCF of x squared out of the first two. And if it's definitely going to factor by grouping, this binomial x plus 3 has to be the same over here, so I have to factor out a negative 4. So x plus 3 and x plus 3 is now the GCF of both the left and right side, and the x squared minus 4 is the leftover binomial. That's a difference of perfect squares, becomes x plus 2 and x minus 2. They're all to the first power, so x equals negative 2, positive 2, and negative 3 all occur once, so we're definitely going to have two turning points because we have no multiplicity of three or more. So here's starting at the left, here's my left hand behavior, it has to come up and go through this point, turn, come back down, head to the y-intercept, go through this point, come back up, and touch through that point, and there's my graph. Now, here again, increasing and decreasing, none of these x-intercepts are going to be a turning point or a relative max or min. So here, at least I know there's a relative max between negative 3 and negative 2. So I can, again, type this in the calculator, find the relative max between negative 3 and negative 2, lower bound, upper bound. 
then I know I have a relative min somewhere between negative 2 and 2. I do not know if this is what happens here. This could come down further and turn and go through the y-intercept on the way up instead of the way down. This is just a guess. But if I find my relative min between negative 2 and 2, I'll find out exactly where it's at. So that's what you can use your calculator to find the relative max and relative min to find your increasing and decreasing.